Dr. Roy. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Nice to meet you. Please tell us about your research and experience in our faculty. When I came here in Prague, in this university, I see there is not much molecular biology which work is going on mm -hmm. in this university. So first thing, what I did is that I make a forest molecular entomology lab. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, now I have uh, three PhD students, mm -hmm. one postdoc, one technician, uh, fully working in the lab. Uh, my, about my experience, uh, I must say this faculty is amazing and all the administrators, dean, vice dean, they supported me a lot during my earlier days and they are still supporting me for all my uh, administrative work and building up the lab. And I feel that it is uh, their vision that they bring foreign scientists like me, there are also few others, to do some high throughput research in this faculty about uh, current issues of forestry. And they expect us to do something uh, at bigger level, which never been done here in this faculty. Please tell us about your research in our faculty. So as I'm in uh, forestry faculty and uh, my experience is entomology, so I am working on bark beetles, which is one of the major cause. I don't know the solely one, but one of the major cause of forest depletion in Czech Republic. So you know the forest is how important in our day-to-day -day life. And I think also for Czech people, it is the Czech sentiment, you know, so forest. They love to walk around the forest. So we don't want our forest depleted. And bark beetles, one of the major biotic agents, which actually causing forest depletion. There are also other problems like drought. So we are working on bark beetle biology. So we are using state-of-the-art methodologies, molecular biology, like, you know, transcriptomics, proteomics, uh, genomics, mm -hmm. to understand the beetle biology. And the goal is to understand the beetle biology, their strengths, their weakness, so that we can target the beetle's weakness to control them. So we are working and we hope that uh, we can find some good ways to control the beetles. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Can you shed some light on any new method of beetle management? Actually, we are trying something new in forestry, which is um, RNAi-based method of beetle management. It is kind of second generation pest management. So here we are uh, using RNAi based uh, mechanisms like we are putting double standard RNA inside the insect and target a particular gene which is important uh, so that the beetle will die. But forestry RNA is very new and we are trying this and I must say we are not alone here. We have our collaborator in USA, in Gent University, we are joined hands together and yeah and, and working on this so that we can bring this technology to forest pest management. Why this method is important? What is different between other methods? Actually, uh, when you spray normal insecticide, it will target any insect on its way, right? So it is non-specific. As well as insecticides, you know, it is not good for health, not for animals, also as well as human, you know? So we are always searching for new alternative methods. And RNAi can be one, designed a very specific, species-specific way. So if we design the uh, double standard RNA, to target a particular gene in a, in a particular beetle. So it can only affect the particular beetle of target. It will not affect the other, other beneficial insects, mm -hmm. you know. So that's why this methodology is powerful. And most importantly, it is already proved that this methodology worked very well in coleopteran group of insects. That means beetles also. And you will be surprised that one of our American colleague already tried it in southern pine beetles. When you think that this method could be applied? For any new method, you know, that it might take long time to come. So for RNAi, I think we have some challenges ahead, which we need to solve before we think of application of RNAi in the forest. Mm -hmm. So if I give you some example, one of them is that finding suitable candidate inside the beetle. So we are working on that part. Then also you need to find a suitable carrier, which actually, how do you apply, you know? So you, you need to have a vector for carrying your DSRN to the beetles. So these are the few things, and also uh, how safe is the environment, like with non-target effects and other things, we need to also cross-check before we apply it. But I am optimistic, our team and also our collaborator, together working on these issues, and uh, we think in few years, if we are successful, 
RNAi can be applied. But one thing I must say here, that it is not only RNAi, we need to join hand together. So we'll use RNAi, but also we follow the traditional methods. So it is not only one wonder method. Yes. Yeah, so it is the addition to what we are already doing mm -hmm. to save like pheromone traps, like uh, um, uh, cutting the trees, affected trees, and removing them from the forest. It will be another tool and may help to substantially reduce the amount of bark beetle attack. That's fascinating. Uh, can you tell us any message for new young students? See, for any country, the young students are the future. So in our faculty, we try to nurture young brains, young students we make, and they are the future of science in Czech Republic. So we are also considering it very seriously. And we are uh, not only introducing new labs in the faculty, but also introducing new subjects like molecular biology, for, uh, molecular entomology. So currently we are accepting uh, PhD students. Also, I have a PhD course, full-time course on molecular biology, basic molecular biology, and advanced molecular biology and microbiology. This year we are introducing also for the master students like molecular biology for all uh, so that um, uh, students can learn and get interest to this field. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much and have a nice day.